Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, who wants to go first? I, I'll give you the choice today. Man, who wants to go first today? All right, right here. Jason got it right here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God, all things are possible. Praise God. And that's just a great start right there for us. Amen. Who wants to go next? Who had their hands up? Oh, right here on this side. Amen. All right. So um, we're going to read Philippians 4.13. Uh, the Lord had a different message for us. So we end up reading uh, Philippians 3.13. Okay. Amen. <laughs> and, uh, so I'll, I'll quickly read uh, uh, 12 to 15 for context. And um, Titus is pressing toward the goal. It says, um, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I keep working toward that day when I finally, when I, when I will finally be all that Christ Jesus saved me for and wants me to be. No, dear brothers and sisters, I'm still not all I should be, but I am focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us up to heaven. So in this verse, um, uh, Paul is pretty much saying that he hasn't reached perfection. But yet, Jesus himself said that we must be perfect the way he is perfect. And when we think about perfection, us as you know, human beings, that, that's practically impossible. It's not possible. We all make mistakes. We all, you know, falter in some way. But in regards to possibility, in Christ, it is possible. And here, even Amen. though um, we got to see that, that Paul confessed, you know, I ain't there yet. I'm not perfect yet. But he made, he had the goal on continuing forward. And where he says, you know, I'm going to forget the past and just keep moving forward towards that goal. Because he knew that in him it was not possible, but in Christ it was. Amen. That God can make us imperfect people perfect. Amen. Only if we are in, in him. And, and I was sharing with my brother that that's what our church's title is called, New Living Way Church. It's not like Amen. an instant I'm perfect. It's the way of salvation. Praise God. It's everyone. a constant walk. <clears throat> is as you stumble, you get up, and you keep moving forward. Why? Because there's the possibility Amen. of that perfection that will lead us to salvation. Um, Sam, uh, Sam got to share um, about uh, when he was in, in basketball. Um, he's been in the city basketball, um, and he hasn't been able to make a basket yet in the game. You know, and I, but do you feel that it's possible? It's like, yes. So possibility is also um, knowing that you are able to do it. Amen. Amen. You know, probably because you have the tools, because you have the skills, or, or just not, you know, it takes also a mispractice. But the time will come where he'll be able to make a basket. Amen. And, and score in the game. You know, and it's likewise, you know, we were, shared, we were discussing that um, even though it is possible, perfection is possible in Christ, that doesn't mean that we just cross our hands and say, oh, well, I'm going to be perfect and just do our own thing. It's like it requires our participation. It requires, uh, just like Paul said, that he is focusing his energies on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. You know, that was his participation. Amen. It's like he knew he had to make that mind change of mindset and he had to keep make that action. It's not even though God is the one that will perfect us, but it does require our participation. That's right. So Amen. it is possible in Christ. That's right. Um, sorry, hold on. <laughs> 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 um, what else are we talking about? Um, Yes, there was also um, when I was asking Sam like what possible meant, he said, "Oh, it means easy," and it's like, "No, 
possible does not mean to, you know, and we all know that sometimes something that's possible can be very, very hard, but you gotta believe that it's possible. You know, and if we have our faith in Christ, it can be possible, and it will be possible for us to be perfect, just the way he is. Amen, amen, praise the Lord, amen. trying to prove to you the other way. It's going to be hard. Okay, so now we're all, and we're going to hear more people talk about the possibilities. And I'm going to say, so what are you going to do about it, basically, is my attitude. Well, we need to reach out. For what? And this is what I hear. I've been to a lot of different Christ, uh, churches in my life. I, I was raised in a church. But we moved around a lot, so I went to a lot of different churches. And one thing I noticed is uh, uh, a lot of people will say, I don't know what the Lord's will is for my life. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you better find out. I mean, excuse me. <laughs> so back here where it says a trying of your faith. So if we're going to believe all this, we're going to have to, and it's not easy, we're going to have to realize that we're going to go through some trials. But look at it positively. What is the trial of your faith? What is what? Well, there's many things that it's going to do. It's going to perfect you and all that good stuff. But one thing, as you go through those trials, you're going to start recognizing which possibility or group of possibilities you should be walking after. So, you know, Praise the Lord. Thank you guys so much. Amen. Oh, right here, right. Oh, yes. She's going to start for Okay. Amen. Okay, so, so possibility is really like a thing that, that, that you need to believe as, as like, hmm. Let's say if, if a person that doesn't think that he could like, Make it to college. The thing where 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 you where you grow an age to do all those work things, and all, and 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 it's just needed to to possibility. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's possible. That's right. Amen. Good job, good job. She did great, amen. <laughs> this is one the scripture that was brought up by Dr. Ruth. It says, 
The good news is Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. That's right, with amen. God all things are possible. There is nothing impossible nothing impossible for him he is the god of all possibilities yes. march oh never mind <laughs> but he is all possible never impossible nothing is impossible for our christ amen amen that's right amen. Good, job. good job good job amen 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 <laughs> to add to that, it's like you said, possible. The word just that right there it means it's doable. That's right. But yeah. you put the iron in front of it, and then it falls apart. Impossible. Okay. With the statement and the re reading that we just had, it's telling you that if you're gonna make something or you want to do something, before you start off on your own. He got into it. That's right, amen. So he can prepare the road for you. Amen. And that's what he does. He opens the doors. And then, as you're walking along, who's next to you? God. That's right, amen. Okay? So, there's no room for failure. It's just having the determination and having the, how do you call it, um, the will. Don't be afraid. Don't, you know, don't doubt it. If amen. you believe it, it'll happen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All one message, right? Amen. Amen. All one message. Just a lot of hand okay. up over here. We're going to go somehow. Okay. So ours was, yes, we are going to piggyback off of um, what Sister said. Yes, with Matthew, all things are possible with God, right? But everything is possible only first and foremost because he loves us. Yes. Um, and so we, it brought us back to 1 Corinthians 13, and it says, And although we have the gifts of prophecy and understanding and mysteries and knowledge and all faith, it says, But now abide it, faith, hope, and love. And of these three, the greatest of these is love. Amen. Because without his love, nothing is possible. Right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. So that was our favorite. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We got two tables left over here. Two tables left. Which one wants to go? Oh, okay. Right here. <laughs> Amen.
my servant is dead. Now then, and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set you, your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river that you first all the Hittites country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So the Lord was showing there that all things are possible to God. We heard it. He did great, and he's still moving. He's still doing him. He's still Amen. being glorified through the nations. So then he, he took me to Joshua chapter 6. And I'm going to read from verse 1 to 16. It says, Now the gates of Jericho were secure there because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with the king and the fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trum trumpets of ram horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpet, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up everywhere straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. That means we have to put God in front of us. He, he fights our battles. It says, And have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army advance, march around the city with the armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets, and the ark of the Lord covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpet, and near guard followed the ark. All this time the, trump the trumpets were sounding, but Joshua had commanded the army, do not give a war cry, do not raise your voice, do not say a word until until the day I tell you to shout. That they shout. And that's how God tells us. Sometimes he tells us just to be patient, just wait, just follow my commands, and he will he will deliver us. He will bring forth what he has in your life and the people around you. And it says, So he had the ark of the Lord carry around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned to the camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carried the seven trumpets, went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them and the near guard followed the ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at the daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army to shout, for the Lord has given you the city. So this is just saying how we obedience. We've been hearing about being responsibility, accountability, but it goes with obedience. That's we right. have to know that who is our God in our lives, what who we who we represent in this earth, and how we're supposed to carry the ark, Him. 
wherever we go. And to finish, I'm going to read Joshua 23, 6 to um, 16. And it reads, um, it says, be very strong. Be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses. Uh, without turning aside to the right or to the left, his path is straight and is narrow. Do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them, but you are to hold fast to the Lord your God as you have until now. The Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nations. To this day, no one has been able to withstand you. One of your rods of thousands, because the Lord your God fights for you, just as he promised. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. But if you turn away and ally your, yourself with the survivors of this nation that remains among you, and if you intermarry with them and associate with them, then you may be sure that the Lord your God will no longer drive all these nations before you. Instead, they will be they will become snares and traps for you, whips on your back and thorns in your eyes until you perish from the, this good land which the Lord your God has given you. Now I am about to go the way of all the earth. You know with all your heart and soul that no one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. No one has failed. But just as all the good things the Lord your God has promised, you have come to you so he will bring on you all the evil things he has threatened until the Lord your God has destroyed you from this good land he has given you. If you violate the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commands you and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, the Lord anger will burn against you and you will quickly perish from the good land that he has given you. So it is everything is possible. There's no impossibilities for anyone. But it's also he's a just God and he loves you. But if you choose every, everything is a choice. It's, it's a choice. If you choose to walk away and mingle with the things of the earth, then you become his enemy. You, God will have to because he's a holy God. That's what he asks, because he commands, be holy because I am holy. So it sounds like bad is actually good because we are under his grace and his mercy. Yes. Yes, and amen. we could come and repent, yeah. going to his throne. There's no impossible to God. You think you did the worst thing of your life? There's no impossible. God is faithful yeah. to forgive you, to restore you, to build you, and to send you away. But we have to keep our eyes on the narrow road. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't look what the other person is doing. Oh, look, he's being blessed, and I'm not. It's okay. But because for the enemy, it's wide and open. But for us, it's, it's narrow and straight. It's because he fights us. We just have to walk. Amen. He does the walk. We don't have to do anything. Just meditate, obey His word, and believe in the Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So you were saying, you were saying that God will, that He'll fight our battles for us. But I just want to say, because I, through experience, um, I did it one time, probably more than one time, but I this one particular time, I did not let God fight my battles, and I chose to fight myself, and then, and then try to bring God in on it. But, um, <laughs> but the thing is, is that you need to really focus and, and let God fight for you, because it's human nature for you to want to defend yourself and fight for yourself. That's right. But um, you have to focus and and know that God will fight for you, and Amen. then things will be better. Because if you don't, and you try to go it your own, it's like it's like I got a slap on the hand from God, and He said, "Okay, you did it your way. 
But look, if you would have done it my way and let me fight for you, it would have been better off. You would have been better off. That's right. Mm -hmm. So just focus and let God fight your battles instead of trying to do it yourself. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I believe you brothers had your hand up over here. <laughs>
So Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. That's the whole story. Uh, here now is the final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commands. For this is everyone's duty. That's Amen. basically it. So King Solomon had all the riches, all the glory, all the wisdom in the world. At the end of his life, this is what he just this is what he said. He goes, at the end of the day, this is what this is what's more important. It is to fear God, right? And keep his commandments. Amen. That's the bottom line. But if he had to do it, how much more we got to do it, man? So basically that's this is this is in a nutshell that God with, with God, nothing, nothing is, is impossible. With, with God, all things are possible this morning. That's right. Amen. 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 But we should have everyone here. God is good, amen, and thank you all for sharing today and encourage each one of us. We're going to get ready to take just a quick five-minute intermission, and then we're going to come back and take communion together. Um, but, oh, you had some? No, no, no. It's God's will. Yeah. And 
you have to know that it has to go along with God's will. And in the end, you know, when it comes to healing, when it comes to healing, you know that he has that ultimate healing in heaven. So because Christ died on the cross, he made even those healings possible for us. Amen. Still a little fresh. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. I'll be very quick. I want to bounce off what Tom had to say and what Amber had to say. Tom says, okay, where do you go from here? What do you do? Dennis. Right? Dennis. Yeah. Dennis. And then her, her last statement was, Dennis, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I know another person that looks like him and I mess up every okay, time, okay. I apologize. Uh, what she said was he's able to overrule harmful attachments in our lives when we place our faith in him. So what do we do? We learn in Revelations, you know, that there were judgments in place, but God's <coughs> going to bring you through. We know there's a satanic ruler, but God's going to bring us through. What we've been doing recently is anointing. And we have, um, there's something called paint your state, but you can start small. Painting with the Holy Spirit, with the oil and, and the cross and declaring and clean. I've been going to the schools, I went to City Hall, my girlfriend and I uh, yesterday went to the perimeter of Orange County. We went all the way through and came down to San Juan Capistrano. And we stopped at certain points and we prayed and we anointed, we declared a decree and we got our oil and got a big old cross. We went to a theater because the theater's got a lot of, you know, kind of like that stuff going on. We anointed the theater. We just anoint your tires, anoint your houses, anoint your kids. Just get ready, because we know bad things are coming. I don't know if you knew last week, this one's going to blow you away. There was a historic UFO meeting at the uh, Congress in, 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 uh, in D.C. And Representative, uh, what is his name? His name is, last name is Gates. I don't know his first name. But he got together with those pilots that saw that orb. You guys heard about it, right? And they have, it was called a UAV, Unidentified Atmospheric Phenomenon. UAP. U O oh, P. Oh yeah, UAP. Yeah, you're right. So that. So we used to call it UFO, now they renamed it like everything else, right? But that that's going on. And these pilots that have been in the service for so long, they were next to that orb, they dismantled all of their stuff. One pilot was able to get a one picture and that's all that they could present. But that's just distraction. Satan is the author of confusion. God is a God of order. And there's so much going on, you know, this this crazy um, drugs that are killing our kids, the youth are in trouble right now. Yeah. The youth are in trouble. Pray for your youth. Anoint, anoint, anoint. And that's all I want to say. Amen. 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 Well, thank you all so much for sharing today. We're going to take just a quick uh, five minute intermission, then we're going to come back. We're going to take communion together, but um, I'll, I'll come back afterwards. Amen. <laughs>
And you let them know that all these things are possible, but it's whatever they put into that work. And I like how she brought that out because it's a lot of what we were, everybody else was saying together. You know, it's knowing that there is a possibility. It's knowing that there is a reason. It's knowing that, you know what, that this, can, this is something that I can do. But we got to be willing to put in the work for it. It just doesn't happen like that. Some things do, but there's other things that we have to make sure we put our work in. And yes, it does have to do with obedience. It has to do with us putting ourselves in that position to be able to actually do in order to be able to make it possible. But it's not to say that it's not a possibility. There are some things that maybe are out of our, like we heard, some things that maybe are just not possible for us because it's not for us. You know, that's not always easy. We, got, we have to hear a no. That's not for you. You know, that's just not going to happen for you. You know, think about King David. He wanted to build the temple. He wanted to build the house for God. He wanted to do all these things for God. And God says, nope, not going to be you, but it'll be your son who will raise up after you. But little did King David know that God wasn't just talking about his son Solomon. He was talking about Jesus who would establish the heavenly kingdom. Amen? Amen. For all humanity so we could all be a part into the kingdom of God because of what Christ Jesus did for us and has done for us already. Amen? And it's because of our faith in him that we are able to hold on to that. So I just want us to think about something here. We live in a world today that we see many things that, are, that seem to be impossible. And in order to know, you know, some, somebody said something the other day. I don't remember. Uh, somebody was telling me something, you know, says, look, I got some good news for you. Oh, Brother Carlos was sharing about him te- giving a testimony. And he says, I got some good news for you. But I also got some bad news for you. And it was about salvation. But how many of us know that if, it, if you don't have good news and bad news, then it's just news? Amen? So in order to know that there's going to be good news, there's always going to be some bad news. And the bad news was without Christ, then you're lost. But with Christ, you have eternal life. Amen? Amen. Salvation, forgiveness. And I like that because that really stuck with me. I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's why we say it's the gospel, the good news. But there is also bad news. And there are many things that we hear about, many things that we see, many things that Sister Karen was bringing out that we can be affected by it because it's like, man, it just looks like an impossible situation. It looks like an impossible situation. It looks like an impossible thing. But see, we wouldn't have possible without impossible. Because then we're able to truly appreciate what the word possible means. You were in an impossible situation at one point in time. Oh, you got quiet on me. Okay. <laughs> I was an impossible situation. Let me, let me go that way. Amen. Oh, I got a response to that one. Amen. So I should have started with that, huh? All right, I got you. I, I was an impossible situation. But the reality is we all were. And honestly, at still at times today, I'm still an impossible situation. But the only reason why it's possible to be a child of God and a servant of God today is because he made it possible. It's only because of what Christ Jesus has done for me, what he's done for you, and what he's done for this whole world today. Because it said that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is the good news. He didn't send his Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it through him. Our job is not to condemn the world. The world is already condemned without Christ. Our job is to be a light and to be a focus that there is good news, that there is a God who loves you, and he gave his son Jesus to die for your sins. You may look impossible, but it's not impossible for God because all things are possible. How do I know that? Because you're looking at an impossibility that God made possible. You can like that, huh? So I'm going to keep it, I'm gonna keep it on me. It's all right, amen. And it's easy to receive, right? And you say, yeah, that's right. That's you, Pastor. Keep that up. <laughs> that's you. And us. We have to understand and know that, yes, this world is getting darker. Yes, it's getting crazier. Yes, there's been, but the world has always been the world's. When does the Bible try to convert the world to live as the world, but yet live it in Christ? You can't do it. But what we can do is be a church that lives for Christ. And to be a light to show that there is another way. And this life may seem impossible, but I like something that my son shared with me, you know, last week he were talking about something. He says, you know, it's amazing how we focus on how hard life can be. And we focus on the battles and we focus on everything. But yet, when you look back at the garden, when God created Adam and Eve, 
He gave it as a gift. How do me and you see our lives today? Do we see it as a gift in Christ? Or do we see it as a constant battle every day? Oh, it's a battle. Oh, it's a battle. Oh, it's hard. Oh, this and that. And what happens is we forget how much our life is truly a gift from God. He gave us life in Christ Jesus. But are we willing to get up every day and say, you know what? I've had to do this. Lord, thank you for the gift that I have today. The life you've given me in you. Yes, there is a battle. Yes, there is struggles. Yes, it can be overwhelming. Yes, it's just, it's just hard. But the realities that are out there, and they're real. But I've had to come to a place in remi- being reminded, but thank you for the gift that you've given me, Lord, in your son, Jesus. Because no matter how impossible it looks, I know it's possible in you. I know it's possible in you. Praying for our cities, praying for our children, praying for your community, praying, schools. you know, schools. for schools. Yes. What looks impossible is possible. The enemy's not winning. Whoever gave you the impression that the devil's winning, the Bible says he's defeated. That's right. <laughs> Jesus says it's finished. Yes. Why are we living as if we're losing? Did you hear about that? Did you see that? Who cares? We got victory in Christ Jesus. And we're going to declare that victory over our kids, over our schools, over the church, over our families, over our marriages, over our community, our leaders, this world. We have the victory. We're not victims. We're victorious in Christ Jesus. And we're going to continue to live that way. But we got to be willing to know that no matter how impossible the situation looks, no matter how far gone it may seem that our world is today, in order to realize, we have to realize it is impossible. But then we come to the place, but it's possible in Christ. It is possible in Christ. Me and you wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Christ Jesus. Right. Me and you could not walk this walk if it wasn't for Christ Jesus. But what we have to be willing to do is, we have to be willing to pause. You ever thought about that? When you look at the word possible, that word pause is in there. Because there are times in our life that we got to look at that mountain that impossible situation, and we just got to pause before our reaction, before our response, before the fear, before the anxiety, before the stress, before the doubts, before all those things. We just got to pause and be still in the Lord. And remember, God, all things are possible for you. Mm-hmm. Nothing is too hard for you. That's right. Nothing is too hard for you. I want to read this scripture in Mark chapter 11. I'm going to read verse 12 to 14 here. It says, On the following day when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. As they, I'm going to go to verse 20. As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. If you believe that you've already received it, if it's for you, but just know that it's possible. It doesn't, I'm not telling you that God's going to answer every single one of your prayers. Just know he is the answer to your prayers. He is the one that can make the impossible possible. 
but we got to be willing before we focus on that impossible situation, even as we're focusing today on so many situations that look impossible, focus on him first. Amen. Take that time. Sit. Be still. Take a pause so we can really focus and remember, but God, all things are possible for you. Amen. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for our God. And those plans that you have for your kids, your grandkids, your family, those family members that you're praying for, those friends you're praying for, the situations that you see, our God is able to reach them right where they're at. Amen. Our responsibility is to keep the faith, to continue to trust him, to continue to do what he's called us to do, to continue to praise him and to glorify him because he truly is faithful. Today, as we take communion, we're taking a pause in our life today because we're remembering what Christ did for us. He took an impossible situation. I was separated from God for all eternity. But because he took an impossible situation and made it possible in his son, Jesus, today we do this in remembrance because this is our faith is that he prepared that body and his son Jesus to be a sacrifice for me and you, but not just for us, but for the whole world. Amen. And that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the goal. That is the good news. That is the thing that will change and brings about change in this world because I know there's been change in the world because God is changing me just as he's changing you. I'm not the same anymore. You're not the same anymore. I may have some old habits and traits and stuff like that, but that old David's dead and buried. I become a new man as you became a new woman, a new man in Christ Jesus. But it's only possible in Christ Jesus. And knowing that, all things are possible. Father, we thank you this morning, God. We give you the glory and the praise and the honor, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, for the body that was prepared for us, Lord. Today, Father God, we thank you, Lord. It's because of the price that you paid. It's because of the willingness and obedience to the Father that you laid down your life for us, that, Lord, we could have life in you, that we could have forgiveness, Lord, that we could be washed and cleansed, Lord, and restored in you, Lord. And, Father, today we are thankful, and we do this in remembrance because, Lord, as we take this time to examine our own hearts today, as we take this time to remember where we were at, what we were stuck in, Lord, Lord, today we're reminded of your faithfulness, Lord, by dying on that cross for us, for taking that beating and the wrath of God for us, Lord Jesus. But because of it, we have faith and life everlasting in you today. So, Lord, we just thank you as we take this bread today for making it possible for us to know you and have a relationship with you. In Jesus' name, let's take and eat. Lord, we take the cup today, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for the blood that was shed for us, Lord. Lord, that... Your word says that there is life in the blood of Jesus. And you gave us life everlasting, Lord. And in that life today, Lord God, we know that this world is temporary, Lord. And though the things that are seen are temporary, but we know that the things that are unseen are eternal, Lord. And Lord, today, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that there is still power in the blood of Jesus, Lord. And Lord Jesus, just as death passed over the children of Israel in Egypt, Lord, yes. Lord, we thank you today that death has passed us over, Lord. But not only has it passed it over, it's been defeated. And it has lost its sting, Lord. Because, Lord Jesus, we know all of our brothers and sisters today that have gone home, they are now with you in your presence, my God. And it's because of that hope and faith that we know we'll see them again. And, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Because though we live in the world, we're not of the world, Lord. But, Lord, we thank you for saving us, Lord. And, Lord Jesus, we are standing believing today as we do this in remembrance that, Lord Jesus, this blood, the power of the blood of Jesus will continue 
to reach all of those, Father God, that don't know you today. And Lord, what seems impossible, Lord, has been made possible because of our faith in what you did for this world, Lord. So we just thank you today, my God. In Jesus' name we pray, take and drink. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen. Always remember, take a pause, rest in the Lord. And even though the situation may look bleak, even no matter how it looks, always remember that it's possible in Christ. We all share great things today. We've all been encouraged today. And you know what? God has many things for you and many things for your family. Keep believing and keep declaring and keep praising him for it. Amen? Yes. And let's continue to do what God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. Pray. Amen. There you I go. I remember to do that all the time. Before I do any pray first, it's like, you can't get in my head. And, but I, that's what I need to do, and I try to do that. Amen. Before I have to make a decision before I do anything, I try to pray. Amen. Praise before the Lord. Before I talk to somebody about something serious, pray and ask God to help me. Amen. Say the right thing. Do the right thing. Praise God. God. Amen. Right Amen. Well, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Well, we are dismissed this morning. Thank you guys all so much. Thank you for all the, you know, you, all the stuff you guys brought in today. Thank you all for helping us eat it. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you could just make sure we clean up from the tables and everything. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.